Hey everybody, welcome back to my shed here in Virginia. My name is Hunter. Today we are going to be covering the topic of adding a metal finish to a skull. Uh, we are not talking about a fake metal finish, it is real. Um, super great option for individuals or taxidermists even uh, for your clients. So it'll be a complete tutorial, going to talk about everything you need to do it start to finish. So let's get started. Okay folks, so before we actually get into adding the metal coat to a skull, uh, we're going to run through exactly what you need to do so. So first off is the tools. Um, there's two ways to apply the coat to the skull. Either you can use a brush or you can use a paint sprayer. If uh, you're just doing like one or two skulls, it's something you're doing for yourself, uh, I would recommend just using a brush. Works perfectly fine. Uh, the advantage to using a sprayer is that you will get a more um, even coat of the paint on the skull. It will not be as textured as a paintbrush will be, uh, but as we go along you'll see that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I would recommend paying the extra like two bucks for a higher quality brush. If you do use the cheap um, chip brushes, those do, the bristles come out, that ends up on your coating and then it really comes through when you add the metal coat so I don't recommend that just pay a few more dollars and get something a little more higher quality um, you are going to need some steel wool at the very end for when we burnish the skull to remove the patina if you're using um, something like a copper uh, metal with a say a blue or green patina we're going to use that at the very end and then lastly if you are uh, like if you're a taxidermist and you're going to be doing multiple skulls I would recommend spending the money on a paint sprayer um, it does and possibly saves time but mostly it's just uh, gives you a little bit more of a uh, like I said an even coat to the skull and then lastly as far as tools goes um, we are going to be I'm going to recommend uh, buying an additional um, sprayer for the patina the one company Sculpt Nouveau that I do recommend they come with their own bottles but um, the spray master gives a finer mist so the patina when you spray it onto the skull will be uh, a more even patina as opposed to kind of blotchy look uh, for your normal kind of uh, water sprayers so that is the tools that we need Okay, now for the good stuff as far as the products that you are going to need. Um, this is everything. Um, I will say this is all from Sculpt Nouveau. Like I said in the beginning, I am not sponsored by the company, um, but I just think they have an awesome product, awesome people to work with. So I am going to highly recommend using them. Um, there is a blog that goes along with this video that lists all of the products that I'm talking about here, all the tools, and goes step through step. Um, if that's uh, fits your style a little bit better, that we can go back and reference it. I will leave a link to that blog in the description of this video. All right, so you're going to need a primer. We're going to put a couple coats of primer on the skull prior to the metal finish. Then you are going to need a uh, metal paint. And this is um, a metal dust mixed with an acrylic. Okay, so we are talking about real metal here. And there's two different types of metal paints that you can use. Um, you have your C and your B. The difference between the two, uh, the C metal paint has more metal in it and you have to use a hardener and a catalyst for that. Um, if you're doing a, a, a larger volume of skulls, I would kind of recommend um, leaning more towards the C. Again, if you're just doing a couple skulls, the B works perfectly fine. Um, Next, you're going to have your patinas at the very end. Um, this is optional, and you have several different colors, choices, blue, green, black, brown, red. There's tons of different patinas that you can add to it. And the patina just gives the, the metal finish um, just a lot more depth, okay? Um, if you just put it on flat, it just, you know, it's to each his own. It's a preference, um, but the patinas definitely give a more aged look to the metal finish. And then a favorite of mine is uh, Sculpt Nouveau has these um, waxes and they come in different colors again black brown that type of thing add it to the metal finish and it gives it uh, a real aged uh, kind of weathered look so I do highly recommend uh, playing around with those and then lastly um, it is optional but you can put a clear coat on the skull afterwards um, I personally think it really helps bring 
both the metal finish and the patina kind of together, ties it all in. Uh, so I would recommend putting that on at the end. And then something else that kind of only applies to skulls really, um, pick you up some just no name brand uh, black primer and we're going to use that to kind of reach some of the areas that you can't reach with a paint brush. So that right there is all you need uh, to get started as far as adding the metal finish. All right, now just a few words about the skull itself. A uh, couple things. First off, as far as the teeth go, uh, it's optional, it's up to you. You can either tape the teeth so that in the end um, they are just natural and don't have a metal finish on them. With deer, personally, I like them to be metalized with the rest of the skull. I think it just flows a lot better. Um, predator type animals like bear, bobcat, that type of thing. Um, that's kind of either or, either way it looks great. Uh, so again, that's up to you. Now, with deer or any type of antlered uh, animal, you are going to want to cover the antlers. I use saran wrap and just uh, any type of tape uh, to cover them up. That way you're not getting paint splashed up on them and then you can just remove that at the end. Very important as far as the skull goes is that the skull is completely free of grease. Um, grease will not allow the metal to bond to the skull correctly, so you're going to want to make sure that there's no grease in the skull whatsoever. Um, in the blog uh, that I referenced to in, in the description of this video, uh, there is an article in there about as far as removing grease, so if that's something you need help with, uh, take a look at that article. And then just another note, um, do wear gloves, uh, you're going to get a messy if you don't, and then if you're using a spray gun, uh, use a respirator that way, uh, you know, just keep things safe. And with a skull, it doesn't have to be white, okay, you're adding, you know, a, a finish to it. Um, that's what kind of makes this a great option for skulls. Um, if you have a skull that's possibly stained or even damaged and you make a repair to it, uh, adding the metal finish is a great option to kind of cover that up and that you don't have to worry about uh, whitening it. But do make sure again that it is completely free of grease and any type of you know dust, dirt, that type of thing. Okay, so step number one is to add your primer. You are going to add two layers of the primer, and you can okay add one layer and then wait till it dries. You're supposed to let it cure for six hours, okay? But you can let that first layer dry you know it takes depending on the weather maybe 10 minutes or so and then add your second layer right on and then you would just need to wait six hours after that to add your metal coat now a note if you are using a sprayer um, you will need to use a strainer and strain out the paint prior to adding it in to your sprayer just because um, there is little bits of paint that could clog up your sprayer. Now I am using a replica skull just for this first part, kind of to show as an example, but we will get into using an actual skull in the end with uh, the metal finish. Okay, now what you can do just to speed up the process in between your layers of primer is use a heat gun and again this isn't what you're using to cure it but just to get it dry enough to add your second layer. If you are in this case using a brush to apply the uh, primer and the metal paint I would suggest dabbing the surface as opposed to just making um, swipe marks. That way uh, it gives it, again, more of a textured surface and you don't have any of the streaks from a brush. Now, like I said earlier, you are gonna need just a generic black primer. 
And that's for areas in the skull where you can't reach with your brush. Um, this is going to especially apply to like um, the nasal area with the turbinates. It just, it's impossible to get a brush up in there. You just get yourself some black primer. Coat it up real nice and then it'll match the rest of the skull. That's it. Alrighty, so next step is to add your metal coat. Um, there are many different options as far as different types of metals, uh, silver, bronze, uh, there's even pewter, copper. We're going to use a copper finish today. And similar to the primer that you put on, um, I would dab the surface. That way you create a more even texture on the skull. And you're going to want to put uh, two to three layers of the metal paint. Again, this is after the primer has cured after six hours. One thing to uh, note is that you will have to shake the metal paint prior to use just because the metal powder does have a tendency to um, settle to the bottom of the container. So just shake it up really good prior to adding it and you can even shake it several times uh, throughout the process just to make sure that that metal powder doesn't settle down to the bottom. Now the great thing about this metal paint uh, being an acrylic is that you can simply wash out your brushes uh, between each use and that way you don't have to buy or use brushes for every single layer of paint that you put on. And again, similar to the primer, um, you can add one layer on, let it dry for a little bit, add the second layer, let it dry, add the third layer, and then you would let it sit and let it cure for, uh, I would recommend overnight, at least 12 hours to let the metal paint cure. And if you are using a spray gun, um, it is okay to leave the paint in the canister in between adding each of the layers of paint. So you can add a layer, uh, leave the paint in the paint gun, come back, you know, 10 minutes later, add your second layer. Okay, so we're just gonna let this first layer dry. Okay, so second to last step is to add your patina. And it's important that the uh, paint is still wet when you add the patina. Otherwise, uh, the acrylic is gonna dry and the patina won't be able to react with the metal in the paint. Um, you can wait till it's dry and add the patina, but then you would have to burnish the surface of the skull in order to expose the metal powder. Now the work time that you have between when you add the paint and you add the patina is going to fluctuate depending on your climate. So if it's really dry, it's going to dry really fast. You don't have much time. Um, if it's a really humid climate, then you're going to have more time to work with it. Again, I'm going to use the Spray Master bottle to add, we have a green patina and we're just going to put a very light mist. You really don't need a whole lot of the patina on there and uh, it will immediately start to react with the metal paint on the skull. Okay. 
and you just want to try and make sure that you get um, all the areas with a little bit of that patina on there. Now you'll begin to notice that it will start to react with the metal like I said but you're going to need about 24 hours to let it completely uh, react and cure with the metal. And as you can see, uh, this is the real skull, and we've let it sit for 24 hours, and the patina has fully cured. Now, you're going to burnish the surface just because there is so much patina on the skull right now. You certainly could leave it that way, uh, but I'm going to take a little bit of it off to expose some of the copper underneath. Um, and I'm just using some fine steel wool to do that. Now. It kind of depends on, again, how much of that patina, patina you want on there, how much you put on to begin with. Uh, so it will kind of vary on how much you actually have to burnish the surface of the skull. Now, don't do it extremely hard. Uh, remember, this is just a coating. If you use the C coating, uh, you have a little more leeway as far as being able to polish up that metal surface more. Uh, but with the B coating, uh, just, you know, light strokes across the surface. Okay, and the very last step, uh, like I said in the beginning, will be to add a clear coat to the skull. This will lighten up the patina slightly, um, but again, I think it just kind of pulls everything together. Um, you could take the copper finish and add, again, um, a wax and give it a different, just aged look without the patina. Um, but with the skull for today, we just went with the green patina. And we're just going to add a light coat of the clear. Again, this is all from Sculpt Nouveau, so all their products go together. Again, I just highly recommend them. And there you have it folks, that is uh, what you need to do to add a metal finish, a real metal, metal finish to a skull. Um, all of the information as far as the products I used, the tools I used, I will leave uh, links to those in the description of this video along again with that blog with has step-by-step -step directions for it. Um, so many different applications you can use this for, so many different options as far as the different uh, types of metal. Um, I personally do a lot of skull carving uh, here in my shed and on my channel, so it goes beautifully with something like that. Um, but take it yourself, run with it. Um, looking forward to seeing what you do with it. If you have any questions whatsoever, uh, shoot me a message, leave a comment below, let me know, and I'll definitely try to help you out. And um, if you enjoyed the video, if you learned something, if you're going to go out and use this yourself, please consider subscribing to my channel. Um, I do stuff like this every single Monday, so once a week I come out with a video on the topic of skulls, uh, different uh, finishes, carving, uh, cleaning, care, mounting, all kinds of awesome stuff. So thanks again for joining me. I hope you learned something, and I uh, hope to see you next week in my next video. Thanks, guys.